Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the quiz where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, I'm Tom. This is my housemate Alice and we're from Sheffield. Couple number two. Hi, my name's Jill. This is my fiancé Nicola and we're from Bury and Greece, Manchester. Couple number three. I'm Rory Innes, my partner Amber, originally from Scotland but now live in London. And finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm Jenny. This is my husband Paul and we live in London. And these are today's contestants. Thank you very much, all of you. A very warm welcome to the show. Lovely to have you on Pointless. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. He needs to realise he doesn't have to raise his hand every time he knows the answer. This isn't school. It's my Pointless friend. It's Richard. Hiya. Hey, everybody. Hello there. Hello. Um, pointless history today. Yes, indeed. First time ever. Uh, shall I tell you why? Because of when we're filming this, Listen, I don't want to give anything away, but there have been occasions where people have been on a show and haven't been able to come back for the following show. So a few people who weren't able to come back are back now, and it means for the first time in Pointless history, we've got four returning pairs I love that. on the show. I love that. And it's nice. nice to have them back when we've got the beginnings of a nice little yeah. jackpot on the board oh, as well. Oh, yeah, I think so. The nice little jackpot on the bubble there. Wendy and Joe didn't win it last time, so we're adding another £1,000 to that, which means today's jackpot starts off... At £7,000. There we are. Well, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. <laughs> Remember at all times that it is the pair with the highest score at the end of each round that gets eliminated, so just keep your scores low. That's all I'm saying. Best of luck to everybody. Our first category today is... Film stars. Do you know what to decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... ..actors whose surnames begin with F-I-L or M. Richard. On each board, we're going to show you the names of seven films. We'll also show you a character from that film and the initials of the actor who played that character. Uh, who are those actors, please? All of their surnames begin F-I-L or M. There we go. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our first board of, uh, of clues. Seven of them. And we've got Raiders of the Lost Ark. Indiana Jones, HF. Bruce Almighty, God, MF. Yentl, Hadas, AI. Dangerous Liaisons, Vicomte de Valmont, JM. The Hunger Games, Katniss Everdeen, JL. West Side Story, Anita, RM. And The Silence of the Lambs, Clarice Starling, JF. There we are, Alice. Welcome back to Pointless. Um, remind us all about yourself, Alice. I'm a geography student at the University of Sheffield. And what sort of things do you like getting up to? Uh, I'm a black belt in taekwondo, so I train three times a week. <laughs> wow. And that's quite hard training. I mean, black belt. Yes. It took a long time to get there, but now I'm I bet it's how many years of, of, of belting? Uh, ten. I've been doing it now. It's wow. quite a long time. That is a long time. OK, good to know you're here, though. It's nice. <laughs> Always good to have a black belt in taekwondo <laughs> on hand. Um, now, Alice, what are you going to go for on our board here? Um, I only know... A few of them. So I'm going to go for The Hunger Games as Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence says Alice for The Hunger Games. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence is absolute, right? Down we go to 27 with Jennifer Lawrence. A great start to the round. Well done. Yes, she's been nominated for three Oscars by the age of 23, Jennifer Lawrence. It's good going, isn't oh, it? It is good going. That and is. And she won one of them, good. Silver Linings Playbook. Indeed. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Richard. Now then, Jill, welcome back. Hello. This is your third and final crack at that pointless final. It is. Oh, tell us more about yourself, Jill. Uh, I work in a betting shop as a deputy sales manager, so obviously that means I'm in charge when management's away. And in my spare time, I do a lot of gaming, uh, walking the dog as well, just to get out and do some exercise. Very good. OK, now, Jill, the board. What are you going to go for? I do know a few, and unfortunately one was just taken. Um, so I'm going to go with Bruce Almighty as Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman for God. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman is right. 27 is the only score we have at the moment. Down you go to 33. Not bad. Morgan Freeman. Oh, uh, yeah, during that movie, uh, by the way, perfect person to play God, Morgan Freeman. Uh, plays him in the, the in Evan Almighty as well. But God's phone number is shown on the screen during the movie. But... In the UK, that phone number actually belonged to a man called Andy Green from Salford, who used to get endless phone calls of people asking for forgiveness. 
Wow. Yeah. There we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Amber, welcome back. Oh. Tell us all about yourself again. Um, I'm 26. I live in London. I'm a marketing strategist for a video production agency. And in my spare time, I like to paint. That's very yeah. nice. Do you set up an easel outside? And paint. Yeah, I was sometimes like, I like to in the sun just to do a little doodle and my little notebook. That's very nice. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. What are you going to go for on our board here, Amber? Oh, there's two. And one of them, I'm like kind of unsure of the first name. I'm going to go Silence of the Lambs. Is it Joan Foster? Is that a name? <laughs> Joan Foster. Oh, no. Let's find out is Joan Foster right for Silence of the Lambs? Oh, it's not. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Amber. 100 points, I'm afraid, for Joan Foster. Yeah, sorry, Amber. Uh, right initials, though. I will give you the, uh, the correct answer at the end of the pass. OK. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Paul, welcome back. Thanks. Uh, remind us all about yourself. Um, so I live in London with my wife, Jenny, I'm originally from Northern Ireland, and uh, I work as a manager for an escape room. Um, but in a previous life in Belfast, I did a lot of extra work as well. Oh, did you? My, my what, what, what was the most exciting thing you extraed on? Um, I did Line of Duty, The Fall, and uh, Game of Thrones, a few Excellent. seasons of that. Oh, that's great. Yeah. He left um, that till last on the list, didn't he? Yeah, I know. Oh, I needed to good. tee it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I think you did good. that right. That was, was beautiful. Really good. Perfect. Very nice indeed. Uh, now then, Paul, this board is all yours. Do you want to talk us through it? So, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Harrison Ford, Silence of the Lambs, it's Jodie Foster, although I feel kind of bad nick in that answer. Um, Anita from West Side Story, I think that's Ruby Murray. Um, I could be completely off on that, but I'll just go with Jodie Foster just to play it semi-safe. OK, there we are, Jodie Foster. I'm sorry, Amber. Oh, um, it, as soon as it, like, it came to me halfway through, and I was like, oh. Always the way. Always the way. Uh, let's see how far down the column we get with Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster is right. 100 are high score. Ooh. 27 are low, 52 for Jodie Foster. Uh, yeah, Jodie Foster, unlucky there. Amber, um, Harrison Ford was 69 points. If you'd said Ruby Murray for West Side Story, you'd have scored 100 points. OK. It is yeah, Rita makes... Moreno, and she would have scored you six um, dangerous liaisons. It's uh, John Malkovich. John Malkovich. He would have scored 11. The best answer on the board uh, for Yentl? No. I don't know. It's played Sue Snell and Carrie as well. It's Amy Irving. Very well done if you said that. Amy Irving, pointless answer. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we are halfway through the round. What a perfect opportunity to take a look at the scores. 27, our best score of the past. Very well done indeed. Alice and Tom looking pretty good. 33 is where we find Jill and Nicola. 52 is where we find Paul and Jenny. And then up to 100 where we find Amber and Rory. <laughs> Rory, it's in your hands. <laughs> a lovely low um, Amy Irving type answer would just be brilliant in the next pass and might get you into the next round. Uh, good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, let's put another board of clues up. Uh, seven clues to actors with surnames that begin F-I-L or M. And here we go. We have got Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope, Princess Leia or Ghana, C-F, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Lucius Malfoy, J-I, Die Hard with a Vengeance, Simon Gruber, J-I, Bedknobs and Broomsticks, Miss Price, A-L, The Dark Knight, Joker, H.L., The Nutty Professor, Sherman Clump, E.M., and Gone with the Wind, Mammy, H.M. There we are. Now then, Jenny, welcome back. Tell us more about yourself, Jenny. Uh, I'm 28. I work for in the advertising department of a news brand, and in my spare time, I run my own business. Oh, the napkins, of course, the napkins. Ah, oh, the future's all, it's all in napkins. Yeah. Very good. Do you do napkin rings yet as well, or have you not yet branched uh, not into yet. that? I'm thinking of going into different fabric homewares, like oven gloves, tea towels, maybe. Very nice. Now, uh, Jenny, what are you going to go for? You're on 52. Um, there's a few, I know, I think they're the most obvious. <sighs> Bed Knobs and Broomsticks was one of my favourite movies as a kid, but I just can't remember what her name is. Um... Let's go for Star Wars, Carrie Fisher. Carrie Fisher says, Jenny, here's your red line. Let's see where we end up with Carrie Fisher. Carrie Fisher's right. Gets you through as well. Look at that, down to 41. Very strong indeed. 93, your total. 
Yeah. Well played, yes. Uh, started, of course, with Harrison Ford in those things. She used to stand on a box for most of their scenes together, though. So Did they could she? fit in the same shot, yeah. Thank you very much, Richard. Now, Rory, we need a very low-scoring answer from you. <laughs> anyway, uh, tell us more about yourself, Rory. Love um, to have you back. Rory, I'm 26, working in investment operations. Uh, spare time, I used to quite like cycling uh, when I was in Scotland. Not got a bike down in London yet. Oh, I see, I thought you said, but there's nowhere down here I like to bike. <laughs> I don't like it here. No, not got my bike down here yet, so soon once I get it down, I'll go cycling again down in London. OK, well said. Now, Rory, you're on 100. You're the high scorers at the moment. Let's get a lovely low score from you. Um, I think I kind of only know very obvious ones. Just trying to work out what's going to be the least obvious. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the Nutty Professor, Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy, says Rory. Uh, no red line for you, but let's see how far down the column we get with Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy is right. Goes down to 54, takes your total up to 154. Yeah, he plays seven roles in that film, uh, Eddie Murphy, and even more in Nutty Professor 2. He, uh, yeah, he packs them in. And he packs them in. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, Nicola. Hey. Welcome back. Thank uh, you. Tell us more about yourself, Nicola. So, I'm Nicola, and I work in network services where I set up mobile sims. In my spare time, I run a YouTube channel with Jill, uh, where we film uh, opening up Pokemon cards, any light like, strategies from playing the uh, mobile game. So, it's quite fun. I enjoy it. That's exciting. It's still really uh, breaking out at the moment. It'll grow exponentially. Yep. It's exciting. Uh, there you are, you're on 33, doesn't matter what you score, you're through to the next round. So that's a relief. Uh, what are you going to go for? So there's a couple on there and there's one on there that I know that Jill's going to be screaming at me that she knows the answer, but I'm probably going to go for the Dark Knight Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger for Dark Knight. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. No red line for you because you're already through. Heath Ledger is right. Good answer. 43. Takes your total up to 76. Yeah, well done. Very well played. Now, Tom, welcome back. Tell us more about yourself, Tom. Um, I'm Tom. I'm a 19-year-old architecture student from Sheffield. Um, in my free time, I like to cook and bake. Uh, I have a food social media account, so that's... Do you? Yeah, I spend quite a lot of time what, doing that. Do you have a particular thing that is yours? What's, what, is um, there any style of cooking or...? Well, a... I'm vegan, so right. it's all vegan on there, but it's kind of like... Showing people it's not just salads and stuff like that. So many delicious things you yeah. can have in, in vegan food. Exactly. Yeah. Excellent. Good stuff. Now, Tom, 27 is your score. Thanks to Alice. Lovely low score. Doesn't matter what you score to get through to the next round. Do you want to talk us through this board? I mean, I wish I could. <laughs> um, I only know one, and that's Jason Isaacs, who is Lucius Malfoy. Uh, Jason Isaacs for Lucius Malfoy. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Jason Isaacs. No red line. You're already through. Look at that, Tom. Very well done indeed. Best score of the pass, in fact. Down he goes to nine, taking your total up to 36. Lovely into the round, Tom. Well done. Yeah, he initially, um, he initially auditioned for the Professor Lockhart, which is the role that went to Kenneth Branagh. And he said his bitterness at not getting the, that role made him perfect for Malfoy. <laughs> That's nice. Great. Um, how are you on the rest of these? Now, the Die Hard one? Yeah. The other J.I.? Yes. He set up a laundry company with Ben Folds. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jeremy Irons. Jeremy Irons. <laughs> Jeremy Irons, oh, for goodness Jeremy sake. Jeremy Irons and Ben Folds. 13 points for that. Uh, Bed knobs and Broomsticks. Angela Lansbury. Angela Lansbury, it was, of course. She would have scored you 22. Um, now an Oscar winner for this role. She's got two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. It's Hattie McDaniel. Very well done if you said that. Best answer on the board. Three points. Very good indeed. Thank you, Richard. Well, that brings us to the end of our first round. It means we have to say goodbye to our first <laughs> pair, Rory and Amber. I'm afraid you are that first pair. We will see you again next time for yes. your third and final <laughs> attempt at the uh, pointless jackpot. But uh, meanwhile, thank you very much for playing Rory and Amber. But for the remaining three pairs, it is now time for round two. There we are, down to three pairs. Well done, everybody. We made it through round one. Best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two this afternoon is... World Geography. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... 
country borders. Rich. Yeah, in a moment, Zander's going to show you a list of six countries. We're looking for any country of the world which shares a land border with one of the following, please. As always, by country, I mean a sovereign state that's a member of the UN in its own right, but any country sharing a land border with one of these six. Thanks very much. So we're going to put these six countries up. They will be staying up for the whole round. We won't be changing them halfway through the round, OK? Here they come. We want any country that shares a land border with one of these. Afghanistan, Algeria, Angola, Argentina, Austria, Azerbaijan. There we are. Alice, we'll come to you first. <laughs> Considering I do geography as a degree, I'm not... <laughs> You didn't have to tell us that. Um, I go for Aust like one that borders Austria. I think Hungary. Hungary, says Alice. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said Hungary. Hungary is right. Look at that, not bad at all. 13, great start to the round. 13 for Hungary. Yeah, 200 miles of uh, border between the two. Obviously, used to be the... Austro-Hungarian Empire. Between mm. the end of the Second World War and 1989, uh, that border was separated by an electric fence up to 1989. Amazing, isn't it? How recent that, uh, that piece of history is. Thank you, Richard. Uh, now then, Jill. There are a few I'm thinking, but geography's not my strongest point. And the only thing I've got coming in my head is Turkmenistan. OK, Turkmenistan. Let's see where we end up with that. Turkmenistan is right, Jill. Down to seven. Very well done. Seven. Great score. Yeah, northwest of Afghanistan, Turkmenistan. That's a lovely answer. Um, 462 miles of border, none of which is uh, electric it's fence, fence, as far as I know, at time of recording. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Now, uh, Jenny. Yeah, geography is also not my strong subject at all. Um, I'm just going to guess Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan, says Jenny. OK, well, you're getting a faint nod from Jill. Let's see if that is right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Kazakhstan. Oh, no! Bad luck. Sorry, Jenny, I'm afraid an incorrect answer. That scores you 100 points. It may well not be the last 100 points of this round. Uh, it's unlucky, though, isn't it? You would think you would think it must surely. border one of Azerbaijan surely. or Afghanistan. What's going on in that neck of the woods? I mean, surely even a, just a little, just a few miles just a here or there. Just a couple of miles would be nice. But uh, yeah, yeah. It doesn't. I'm afraid. Sorry. Well, that brings us to the halfway mark of this round. Means we can have a look at those scores. Seven, the best score of the past, Jill. Very well done indeed. Jill and Nicola, I think you shall go to the head-to-head. -head. Thirteen is where Alice and Tom are. It looks from here like you shall too. Um, Jenny and Paul, there you are on a hundred. Let's see what happens on the next pass, Paul. There could be many a slip, twixt cup and lip, but a lovely little scoring answer from you could bring you back into the game. So good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? <laughs> OK, so, Paul, remember, we're looking for any country that shares a land border with any of these countries on the board. So, you're our high scorers at the moment. Yeah. Um, geography, likewise, is... Uh... Not great. Um, I'm just going to take a punt on an African country um, that I think is quite big. So hopefully it'll, uh, you know, touch a few others. Uh, Mauritania. Mauritania, says Paul. OK, no red line for you as you're the high scorers at the moment. Let's see if Mauritania is right. It is right. Wow. Now, if this scores less than 13, you've done yourself every less than seven. Oh, it's a pointless answer. <laughs> Very well done indeed. That adds £250 to today's jackpot, takes the total up to £7,250. Crucially, it scores you nothing. I mean, you could have kept yourselves in the game there. It's beautifully done, yeah, just southwest of Algeria. It's interesting, we've had two people now saying, oh, I don't really really know anything about geography, and they've gone for Turkmenistan and Mauritania. Yeah. <laughs> If, I, if only we were also bad at geography. Absolutely. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Nicola. Again, geography is, is, is not my strong suit. I'm going to go with Cuba. Cuba. Cuba, says Nicola. OK, here is your red line. Let's see if Cuba can get you below that red line. I'm 
afraid not, Nicola. I'm afraid that scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 107. Paul and Jenny, back in the game. Yeah, it's an island, Cuba, so no, uh, no land borders at all. Thank you very much indeed. Now then, Tom. Tom, you have a target, which is 93 or less. Um, I've got a few answers, but I think I'm just going to play it safe and say Germany. Germany, says Tom. OK, Germany, here is your red line. Let's see if you can get below that with Germany. You can. Down it goes to 68. Well done. Tactically, probably a smart move. Takes your total up to 81. Yeah, very sensible thing there to do, I think, there, Tom. Um, if you had gone for a risk, what might you have gone for? Panama. Panama would have scored you 100 points. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Um, you got any answers? Oh, do you know what? Um, you don't have to. Um, Mali. 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 Interesting. Angola. Now, Mali borders Algeria. Oh. As I think you knew. Oh, did you think Al it was Angola? I said Angola. That's See, there we are. Matter. Yeah, OK. Um, pointless answer. Oh, good. Very That's well nice. done. Oh, I mean, cute. sort of an unfair pointless answer, but it is a pointless Sorry, answer. Unfair, yeah. yeah. Um, let's all learn some geography, shall we? Uh, all of us, because it's so hard with some of these countries. So, Afghanistan, here are your low scorers. No pointless answers at all. So, Turkmenistan's a very good one. Tajikistan, two. Uzbekistan, five. China, 10. Iran, 18. Pakistan, 33. Those are your answers for Afghanistan. That's what that's surrounded by. Algeria, uh, we've already had Mali and Mauritania, which are pointless answers. Niger as well would have been a pointless answer, three pointless answers there. Libya, 10. Uh, Tunisia, 14. Morocco, 23. Uh, Angola, no pointless answers. Republic of the Congo, two. Zambia, three. Democratic Republic of the Congo would have scored you three. And uh, Namibia would have scored you five. Argentina, the best answers are Bolivia and Paraguay, which scored you five. 10 for Uruguay, 34 for Chile. Brazil would have scored you 46. Austria, the best possible answer uh, is Liechtenstein, which would have scored you one. Four for Slovakia, five for Slovenia. They are always next to each other in these, aren't they? Czechia would have scored you six. Uh, Italy, 26. Switzerland, 31. And Azerbaijan, there is one other pointless answer. Armenia was a pointless answer. Well done if you said that. Georgia, three. Turkey, seven. And Russia, 16. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, at the end of our second round, the pair who are heading home with their high score of 107, it's Nicola and Jill. This is your last time, I think. It is, We yeah. say goodbye to you. I'm so sorry to be saying goodbye. Uh, you've been fantastic Thank the you. whole way through every one of your games. Um, but I'm sorry you're not leaving uh, with, with a trophy to show for it. But uh, thank you so much for playing, Nicola thank and you. Jill. Thank you for having us. For the remaining two players, though, it's now time for the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> Congratulations, Alice and Tom, Paul and Jenny. Uh, you're now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £7,250. But before we play the head to head, we have an opportunity to put more money into that jackpot by finding a couple of pointless answers. Here goes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Team GB rowers as they could. Richard? Yes, six names on the board. Four of them are people who've rowed for, uh, for GB at the Olympics and two of those are pointless answers. There's also two fake answers up there. Thank you very much indeed. Can you find the genuine pointless answers from these six? Let's see who they are. Fiona Bigwood, Gary Herbert, Geoffrey Edward, Helen Glover, Mo Sbihi and Rebecca Romero. There we are. Well, Helen Glover's yeah, Helen right. Glover. Yeah, mm. that's but the only one I recognise. Yeah. That'll be not pointless, because I feel if I know that, everyone will know that. Mm. <laughs> Although we, we did make that mistake in the last one, didn't we? So. Um, I can't say can, his name. Can we go for Mo Sabihi? OK, yeah. Mo Sabihi. Mo Sabihi. Let's find out if Mo Sabihi is a pointless Team GB rower. Mo Sabihi is a Team GB rower, definitely. And a pointless one as well. Very well done indeed. Good work, Alice and Tom. Now, Paul and Jenny, can we see if we can find the other pointless answer there? Mm, uh, no, knowing the answers doesn't always help you, actually, to be honest. I'm drawn to Rebecca and yeah, Mer Romero, but then yeah. I feel like that's probably like a Godfather reference or something. Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, oh. Rebecca Romero. Rebecca Romero. OK, let's see. Is Rebecca Romero a pointless Team GB rower? That's a correct answer. And another point is very well done indeed. 
It's been a long time since we've had a double pointless. Fantastic. Isn't it just, yeah, 11 shows since we last had a double pointless, so very, very well played. Rebecca Romero, I'm amazed, was a pointless answer. Yeah. She won a, a silver for rowing, and then at the next Olympics won a gold in cycling. Completely retrained and changed sports and won another, uh, won another medal. Amazing stuff. Now, of these others, Helen Glover, we all spotted. Very well done. Uh, she would have scored you a point, though. Fiona Bigwood was an incorrect answer. Uh, equestrian. Um, she won a Equestrian medalist. But there's other two. One of these is incorrect, one of them is not. What do you think, and why is the incorrect answer an incorrect answer? Shall I tell you? Shall I? Yeah, go listen, on. I'll tell you why one of them's incorrect. Right. OK, and you can tell me what you think. One of okay. those is made up of Steve Redgrave's middle name and James Cracknell's middle name. Um, uh, and the other right. one is a Cox. Um, J uh, Gary Herbert's Cox. <laughs> Sounds like graffiti, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, Gary Herbert's a Cox. Let's take a look. Is he? He sure is. That would have scored you a point. And yeah, Jeffrey oh, is Steve Redgrave's middle name and uh, Edward James Cracknell. So that was the other incorrect answer. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, well done. You managed to find two pointless answers, which means we can add £500 to the jackpot, taking it up to £7,750. <laughs> but who will be playing for it? Let's find out in the head-to-head. Now, the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot, and you are now allowed to confer. Very, very best of luck to both pairs. Our first question is all about... animals sticking out their tongues. Richard. Uh, yep, we've got five pictures now of animals. They're all sticking their tongues out. Uh, we're going to give you the first and last letters of their names as well, but what are these animals, please? Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal the five animals with tongues out, and here they are. We've got... A... B... L... T... R. Oh. Oh, it looks like Einstein. <laughs> B, K, O, D, N. Yeah. I mean, his tongue really is out. That is out. That is out. C, M, N, S, N, B, R. D, B, E, T, D, S, K. And E, V T S G. Whoa, is that yeah. a tongue? Yeah. That is crazy. Okay. Now then, Alice and Tom, you get to go first. You're a golden couple, so feel free to convert. Okay. Okay. Swig. <laughs> It's a slight risk, but I'm pretty sure. A blue-tongued skink? Blue-tongued skink. blue tongue. you're not kidding about the first bit. Um, <laughs> there we are, blue-tongued skink, you're going to say. Right, Paul and Jenny, do you want to talk us through the rest of that board? Um, so, we're gonna, A, bangled tiger, B, Komodo dragon, um, C, something sun bear, E, not too sure. Um, it, violet something. Is yeah, violet, violet something? something or other. Oh, um, we'd be guessing the start of the bear, but I guess play it safe. Yeah, maybe. I think Just... they've got that right. So, yeah. yeah. Um, Bengal tiger. Bengal tiger. Bengal tiger. Yeah. Okay, Bengal tiger. So we have got blue tongued skink and Bengal tiger. Blue tongued skink for D is what Alice and Tom are going for. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our one hundred people got it. Blue tongued skink. It is a skink. With a blue tongue. That's a great answer. Look at that. Down it goes to 14. Very well done indeed. Paul and Jenny, meanwhile, have gone for the Bengal tiger. For A, let's see how many of our 100 people said Bengal tiger. Bengal tiger is right. 50 for Bengal tiger. Very well done indeed, Alice and Tom. You carry that one, the blue tongued skink. After one question, you're up 1-0. Yeah, very good risk to take there. When it's threatened, the blue tongue skink puts its tongue out, puffs itself up and hisses. It does a little bit of everything. Aww. Aww. Now, B, a few more points for Komodo Dragon, but it scored you 55. Now, this one, so it is a sun bear. Normally, you can work these things out. But, uh, obviously, yeah. it's not mountain, not enough dashes no. in there. Um, it's also known as the honey bear, this one, by the way. Its Aww. tongue is so long because it goes into hives and licks the honey out of a hive, bless it. Mm. Um, it's the Malayan sun bear. Uh, Malayan, yeah. very well done if you said that. Would have scored you two points. Now, this last one, it's a violet something. Definitely a violet That's something. That's for sure. 
I just assumed it was a violet starling and looked away, and then I realised that uh, there were too no, many letters. Too many letters. Ah, uh, you'll never get it, I don't think. No. Anyone know it? It's a pointless answer if you did. It's the violet sabre wing. Lovely. Ooh. It's a good name, isn't it? Isn't it just? It's a hummingbird. And it hovers above plants and sticks its tongue down in to get the nectar. Wow. Oh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, here comes your second question. Paul and Jenny, you get to go first. You have to win it to stay in the game, though, so best of luck. Our second question today is all about diaries. Richard. Yep, and it can be five clues now to things uh, to do with various fictional diaries. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five clues, and here they come. We've got... Diarist created by Helen Fielding and portrayed by Rennie Zellweger in three feature films, BJ. 2001 film starring Anne Hathaway as a teenager who learns she is heir to the throne of Genovia, TPD. 1892 comic novel about suburban life and the mishaps of Charles Puter, TDOAN. Jeff Kinney's illustrated journal about the misadventures of a schoolboy, DOAWK. And the author of The Secret Diary of Adrian Mole, aged 13 and three quarters, S.T. There we are. Paul and Jenny go first. Please see, you know, we can't make one. No. Um, I guess I think it might be the diary of uh, nobody. Yeah, we, 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 I think I know the comic novel, but it's a risk, so we'll go for um, the illustrated journal about the adventures of a schoolboy, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Diary of a Wimpy Kid, say Paul and Jenny. Now, Alice and Tom, do you want to talk us through that board? That was going to be our answer. <laughs> <laughs> the first one is Bridget Jones. Um, I think the second one's The Princess Diaries. And then I don't know the other two. The third one seems to be like The Diary of A, but then I don't know what the A is, so... Yeah. <laughs> the Princess Diaries? Yeah. The Princess be... Diaries. OK, The Princess Diaries say Alice and Tom. So we've got Diary of a Wimpy Kid versus The Princess Diaries. Paul and Jenny went for Diary of a Wimpy Kid for Jeff Kinney's book. Let's see how many of our 100 said that. Diary of a Wimpy Kid is right. That goes down to 19. <laughs> Meanwhile, Alice and Tom have gone for the Princess Diaries for the uh, Anne Hathaway film. The Princess Diaries is right. Has to go down to 19. 38 for that. Well done, Paul and Jenny. After two questions, you're back in the game. It's one all. Uh, you're quite right that the diary of A would have uh, seen you through to the final. We will get to it in a moment. Uh, Bridget Jones would have scored you 68 points at the bottom there. The writer of Adrian Mole is Sue Townsend. Sue Townsend would have scored you 45. And the diary of A... Oh, nobody. Nobody. Yep. And that would have scored you 10 points. Uh, thanks very much indeed, Richard. OK, now, here comes your third question. Whoever wins this one goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot. What a decent jackpot it is. Best of luck to both pairs. Our third question is all about the best video games of all time. Richard. Yep, we're going to show you five titles now from Time Magazine's list of the best video games of all time. We've missed one word out of each title. What is that word, please? Whichever team gives us the most obscure answer is going through to play that very, very nice jackpot. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five video games, and here they come. D. Kong, 1981. World of W, 2004. S. Invaders, 1978. The Legend of Z, 1986. And A. Birds, 2009. Alice and Tom will go first. We're going to take a bit of a risk because we're not entirely sure, but we think World of Warcraft for the okay, second Okay, World of Warcraft, say Alice and Tom, World of Warcraft. Now, Paul and Jenny, do you want to talk us through that board? Um, so we've got Donkey Kong, World of Warcraft, Space Invaders, The Legend of Zelda and Angry Birds. And... Um, Which is... Uh, I think The Legend of Zelda will probably be... Yeah. Yeah, of those, the most obscure. Legend of Zelda. OK, The Legend of Zelda. So we have World of Warcraft and Legend of Zelda. Alice and Tom went for The World of Warcraft. Let's see how many of our 100 got that. It is Warcraft. That goes down to 53. <laughs> this will decide who goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot of £7,750. Paul and Jenny have gone for The Legend of Zelda. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said it. 
Legend of Zelda is absolutely right. It's got to beat 53, and it does go down to 50. Ooh. Very well done indeed, Paul and Jenny. After three questions, you are through to the final 2-1. Yeah, very well played. A board full of high scorers, and you guys picked the best two answers you possibly could have done on that board, so uh, very well done. Donkey Kong would have scored you 76. Um, Space Invaders, a very big scorer, would have scored you 89. And Angry Birds scores quite a lot as well. Angry Birds would have scored you 74. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round. I'm afraid it's Alice and Tom. You've played so well across today's show. Oh and that it should come down to those two. And it was so close in the end. I'm sorry we have to send you away. Um, Blue Tongue Skink was, a, was an absolute <laughs> game-winning answer, if you ask me. Uh, we'll see you again next time. Let's hope we can take it one step further then. But meantime, thank you very much indeed, Alice and Tom. Thank you. For Paul and Jenny, though, it's now time for the pointless final. Congratulations, Paul and Jenny. You have fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £7,750. Well, very, very well done indeed. What a great day to get through to the final. Um, what's going to help you win that jackpot? What do you want to see come up? History, film, TV... Um... Pop culture. Yeah. OK, well, let's see what we've got for you today. Four things as ever. And today we can offer you Charlie Chaplin, Decades of the Turner Prize, West Indies Cricket, Mercury Prize winning rap albums. Your, I mean, Turner Prize? <sighs> Turner, let's go for that one. De if it's Decades of the Turner Prize, maybe I like things that happened in the 90s. Don't know. Mm -hmm. Turner Prize. Turner. Okay, Decades of the Turner Prize. Uh, it's been on the ball for a long time. Thank you for uh, picking it off. Um, we are looking for the name of any nominee or winner of the Turner Prize in the 1980s. Any winner or nominee in the 90s or any winner or nominee in the first decade of the 2000s, please, so 2000 to 2009. So 80s, 90s, 2000s, Turner Prize nominees or winners. Very, very best in luck. Thank you very much indeed. And as always, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. OK, so obvious ones like Damien Hirst. Did Lucy and Freud? When... Mm. I can't remember, my head right remember when he died. Um, Tracy Just... Emin, obviously. Um, I Weiwei, is the Turner Prize awarded to people? You could try I Weiwei, maybe okay. for... Yeah. I'm trying to think what decade, though. Um, maybe the 2000s, but um, maybe... And then oh, there's another one I'm trying to think of that was a part of, like, the... Um, with, like, the Tracy Emin era, um, Sue something, but I can't remember what her name is. What was the, um, there was a sculptor that you were, not Tracy Emin, that you were thinking about, like, not so long ago? Remind me. Ten I seconds know, left. She, it, was a, it was a woman, <laughs> she had a name. <laughs> um, uh, oh, no, you're thinking of Barbara somebody, but no, not her, mm. she was before then. Um, that is your time up, I'm afraid. Let's have your three answers. <laughs> I mean, that, okay. this is all you here, so... Let's go so, for Ai Weiwei. Ai Weiwei, for which decade? Mm, let's tip, put him in the 90s. In the 90s, Ai Weiwei. Um, Damien Hurst. Damien Hurst. For uh, the noughties. For the noughties. And then Tracy Emin in the 90s. Tracy Emin in the 90s. OK, of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? Uh, Ai Weiwei. Ai Weiwei will put last. Least likely to be pointless? Damien Hurst. Damien Hurst and Tracy Emin will pop in the middle. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, and here they are. We have got Damien Hurst, Tracy Emin and Ai Weiwei. There we are. Three answers. They look good on the board. Uh, let's hope one of these turns out to be pointless and wins the jackpot for you. If you were to win £7,750, what would you like to do with it? Paul, I'm going to ask you first. Um, we've talked about getting a dog for... Uh, years, you know, that's been um, constantly talked about, and uh, a dog. A dog, Jenny? Like... Maybe a holiday to Mauritania, or... Oh, that um, might be nice. Well, we're saving for a deposit for a house, so... Yeah, very good. OK, well, very, very best of luck. Your first answer was Damien Hurst. We're looking at uh, Turner Prize nominees in the 2000s in this case. 
Let's find out how many of our 100 people said Damien Hirst. Is he pointless for £7,750? Damien Hirst. Bad luck. No, not in the 2000s. Mm. An incorrect answer. Let's move on to your next answer, Tracy Emin. We are now looking for Turner Prize nominees in the 1990s. Tracy Emin, if she is right and is pointless, will win you £7,750. How many people said Tracy Emin? There we are. That's the right decade. <laughs> Damien Hurst, incorrect decade, I think, there. Tracy Emin now taking us down through the 20s into the teens. Down we go, 16. Tracy Emin. Let us now turn to your third and final answer, Ai Weiwei. We are now back in the 1990s looking for Turner Prize nominees. Let's see if Ai Weiwei is pointless. No bad luck. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> well, there we are. It was, a quite a, it was quite a tough category, I think, for you, that one. And I'm afraid you didn't manage to find the all-important pointless answer. So I'm afraid, while you don't win today's jackpot, you do nonetheless win today's trophies. So very, very well done for that. Uh, and very well played across the show, Paul and Jenny. Yeah, and you gave it a go. I have to say, Damien Hirst, yeah, would have been 90s, but would have scored you 11 points. Uh, and Ai Weiwei, it's mainly given some people's bodies of work from the UK, so Ai Weiwei never been uh, nominated, although most famous for, in the UK anyway, for his uh, the ceramic seeds in the, in the turbine hall at the Tate. Uh, let's take a look, shall we, at the Turner Prize nominees in the 1980s. Alison Wilding, she's also a pointless answer for the 90s. Derek Jarman, the film director. Howard Hodgkin, literally the first name out of your mouth yeah. at the start oh, of the 60 seconds I'm was Lucian so Freud, ah. who was nominated in 1988 and 1989. That's really, really unlucky. You just you talked yourself out of it as the uh, as, as the minute well, went I'm on, sorry. and you came up with more obscure answers. Uh, so it's really, really unlucky. Every single nominee from the 80s was pointless, apart from Gilbert and George. Every other name uh, pointless. So very well done if you uh, got any others. 90s. Some big names from modern art here. Christoph Philly, Gillian Waring, Rachel Whiteread. Uh, those top three all won it. Sam Taylor Wood was nominated. Gary Hume, Jane and Louise Wilson, uh, Mark Wallinger, Cornelia Parker. Everyone point this for the 90s, apart from Tracy Emin and Damien Hurst, uh, Anthony Gormley, Steve McQueen and Anish Kapoor. Everyone else is pointless. And the 2000s, uh, Mark Wallinger, a pointless answer again. Jeremy Della, uh, Toma Apts, and the photographer Wolfgang Tillmans as well. Everyone pointless in that decade, apart from Grace and Perry, uh, Martin Creed, Richard Wright, and Simon Starling. Everyone else pointless. Very well done. If you've got any of those answers at home. Thanks very much, Richard. And thanks once again, Paul and Jenny. I'm sorry you didn't win our jackpot today. That'll therefore be rolling on to the next show when we will be playing for £8,750. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>